Shalom, everybody. It's Nick Vanderlaan. Um, it is the first day of the fourth month. Um, as you can see, the sun behind me is about to rise. I don't know if you can see that right now. Um, as soon as the sun rises above the horizon, it starts the uh, new day. Uh, you, uh, it says that uh, Yahweh's mercies are new every morning. So there's a renewal of the day. His mercies are renewed every day. Um, in every morning and um, every night, uh, you know, praise him for his his faithfulness, and he's faithful every night. So, guys, I just want to get into this message here because I have yesterday was a new uh, festival of the new month for us, and um, I pulled an all nighter putting this thing together, and I want to share this encouraging information and um, with you guys, and at the same time keep it. Keep it honest and straightforward with you guys. So this message is titled, The Son of Righteousness Rapture. And um, I, we had a viewer that left me this comment here regarding this verse. And he saw my last video. I'm not editing any of this out. We're just rolling. And I know I have a bad speeching challenges sometimes, but I don't know if I can make any edits, guys. So... I'll try not to make any edits, but okay. So anyways, um, so getting to this uh, verse, uh, he, I was talking about the, okay, the, the message was the summer solstice judgments. We went over uh, Sodom and Gomorrah uh, around this time or on this day. We went over Joshua's long day on this day or around this time. And I also talked about the 185,000 Assyrian army that was struck down. And I talked about that, you know, planet 7X, um, but also believe that it was Yeshua that came and had an apparition and, and the angel of Yahweh or the angel of the captain of, of Yahweh's host came out and uh, appeared. And so this message right here is based on the scripture. But to you who fear my name, okay, uh, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings with, and you will break out leaping like calves released from the stall okay and this is such a great picture of some joyous event where literally when the son of righteousness rises with healing in his wings that it's gonna just be a explosion of joy and happiness so here is the bulla of king hezekiah and what happened with king hezekiah he had like a uh he had a bad illness and he was going to die and there was nothing anyone could do about it. Terminal illness. And what happened was he sought out to Yahweh, cried out to Yahweh, and Yahweh had mercy on him and gave him, extended his life. And the sign that was given to him that his life would be extended 15 years uh, was that the sun would go, uh, the sun's shadow would go back 15 degrees. And so uh, what we have here, guys, and it happened, and what we have here is we have the bulla or a seal of King Hezekiah made with a signet. And what's, what, what you see here is you see a sun with wings, okay? And then also, or, or maybe Planet 7X or Planet 9, according to what Caltech, the University of uh, California Institute of, of Technology, they believe they call it the ninth planet, and that's coming from one of the most prestigious mathematics and applied science uh, schools in the world. They call it, they, they, they believe they found this missing ninth planet. Um, but what you see also here associated with, is with this, is the Ankh, guys. And there's another one over here, which symbolizes life. So the life had to do something with this here, with this planet. This winged sun may be coming out of its place, um, or this new other planet that some people theorize of. Gil Broussard from Planet 7X, he's theorized of it. He's done a lot of work, a lot of good work on using a ball earth. I've looked at it under a flat earth model, and I'm not here to discuss flat or bald earth. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out because I use some of his information and I just bring in some other ideas of possibly using a flat earth. And uh, I actually think that we solved it using a flat earth 
or we saw or we presented a very very good theory regarding it but regarding Joshua's long day in a flat earth on how the sun stood still in the midst of heaven here's Malachi 4 2 here's a whole bunch of different um, translations but I, I got this here to show you that some of the translators capitalize son of righteousness and uh, it's a title for Yeshua or the same you know the angel of uh, the captain of the army of Yahweh's hosts or the angel of Yahweh the angel of Yahweh not a small angel but the angel the messenger of Yahweh um, I don't know if we talked about that but yeah we talked about the name of Yahweh we should talk about the name of Yahweh I believe but Yeshua has a more excellent name than any of the angels by inheritance it says in Hebrews chapter 1 that sun's about to come up here for the solstice pretty cool but in Hebrews chapter 1 it says that you know he inherited by inheritance he uh, inherited a more excellent name than the angels why because he came in the father's name okay uh, Yeshua um, is short for Yehoshua and you have Yah in there well 74 times in the Bible it talks about Yah it's mentioned Yah not Yahweh but Yah because it's the family name of the father and the son and you uh, I, that came from Pastor Don Esposito but what the Ruach showed me was was that um, Yeshua has the name Yah in his name but in angels names they don't have the word Yah it's only El for Elohim okay so you have um, Mick, uh, Michael Mikael you have Gabriel you have Uriel but they all just carry L they don't carry they, they're not they don't have Yah in it because it's a family name the father and the son who has gone up to heaven who has come down who has gathered who has um, spread out gathered who has gathered the wind in his fists spread out the waters and set boundaries for the waters what is his name and what is his son's name surely you know this is the father and the son this is their name so guys um it's a little bit late and early in the morning at the same time malachi chapter four we can go through here but this is talking about you who fear my name this is the same verse shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth as uh, calves going out of the stall and let's take a look at what calves look like going out of the stall frolicking guys going. so you know nothing but joy and amazing to have a feeling that's going to feel like so a couple other verses that i want to bring out um because i know that i talked about it in my last video about hey um you know what to do or what's the situation and you know i think that judgment happens in the house of elohim first and if there is a pre-tribulational rapture prior to these events which i lean strongly this way um and it's not just wishful thinking it's just how i lean that uh, you know that there's going to be a judgment among the uh the virgins okay or you want to call it the bride of messiah though not the bride but the ten virgins or uh it begins in the house of El elohim so come, come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee and hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, Yahweh cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So guys, someone shared this with me. I want to share it with you. This is about going into your chambers and shutting your doors behind you. Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. This is what I talked about in Isaiah 28 and also Jeremiah 49 to 51. We have the sun coming up right now. Hallelujah. And um, and it's a new morning. It's a new day. So the new day started, guys. His, new, his mercies are new every morning. Every time 
that sun comes up above the horizon it says his it's like his his mercies are new every morning and the morning starts when the sun comes up above the horizon it's all in the scriptures it was right in front of her face the whole time so Isaiah 28 21 for Yahweh shall rise up in Mount Perazim okay I believe this to be the area of Sodom and Gomorrah some people say it was for David um, there's Nahal Perazim down there by Sodom by Mount Sodom down there in the Dead Sea in the Dead uh, in the Jordan Valley he shall be wroth as in the Valley of Gibeon this is Joshua's long day that he may do his work his strange work and to bring to pass his act his strange act like smiting 185,000 Assyrians so this is going to be just um, uh, something totally weird that everybody is not going to be it's going to be strange to everybody and lastly, I want to bring you guys this scripture here. For we say unto you that by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of Yahweh, should not pervert them which are asleep. For the Master himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahweh in the air. So shall we ever be with Yahweh or our master wherefore comfort one another with these words so hopefully you guys you're comforted by these words um, you know there if there is going to be judgment guys on the United States which is Babylon USA which is um, uh, the drunkards of Ephraim and they're judged the final tipping point two things I believe it's the vengeance of Yahweh's temple of Zion when 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 the when Ephraim United States uh, makes arrangements on the peace deal which is being done yesterday today the day before Jared Kushner has been out doing that he um, Netanyahu met with uh, the, the King Abdullah from Jordan which is an enemy and he went over into uh, there and met with him they're getting this peace deal done now they might not it's going to take some time for people to get used to it until they say it's done they might be making the agreement today guys they might be making the agreement today and might get finalized today they might release what it looks like today but they might not say what it is until so people can be there's going to have to be some conditioning they're going to have to condition you know their people to accept this deal okay because if you say hey we're gonna be splitting this thing up the whole Arab world is gonna freak out alright and it's gonna start a war it's gonna start war prob probably this is my guess okay so but USA I believe is gonna get judged and it's the crown of pride you gotta look at my last four or five three or four videos guys maybe five videos you, you need to check this out Ephraim's going to be judged. USA is going to be judged. But I think that there's going to be a judgment in the house of Elohim first. We know this from First Peter. And I'm going to go ahead and get into this. But first, before we get into this, I want to talk about the identity of the tribulation saints. Because not a lot of people talk about who these people are that are in the tribulation that are being slain for their testimony. And what else are they? What else is it besides their testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach? They are them that keep the commandments of Elohim and Revelation 12 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of Elohim okay the remnant of her seed the leftover ones people that didn't make the escape I believe and they have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach and again Revelation 14 12 here's the patience of the saints here they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yeshua so here we have same thing guys it's established there's two witnesses right here two verses they keep the testament commandments of Elohim and they have faith of Yeshua HaMashiach the Messiah it says blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to, to, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth them maketh a lie and so this is a ble they're blessed they're blessed to do his commandments guys it says it right here the commandments are going to be the ten commandments the same commandments that we're called to keep now the same commandments even before it's called the ancient path 
okay, where you can get rest for your soul. How can you get rest for your soul? It's keeping the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath holy and set apart and keeping it. It says in, I think, Hebrews, that if there, had been, if there was a new day, it would have been given a new day. But there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. Look that up in, in Hebrews. The translators, the scribes, lied to you guys there. The word for rest is sabbatamos, which is the Sabbath, guys. But they translated it as rest. It says, there remains a rest for the people of Elohim. No, it says there, should be, there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. They lied to you, guys. The scribes lied to you just like it says it would in Jeremiah, the lying pen of the scribes. So my question to you guys is, and i got to be honest with you guys, right? I can't give you the, the rapture verses and not give you these other verses so you can examine yourselves, hopefully, right? Um, my question to you is, why in Revelation are all the tribulation saints now suddenly all commandment keepers? And commandment keepers being the Sabbath as one of the commandments, right? It's the only identifiable commandment that you rest on the Sabbath day. Okay, I was going to rent a car here, and I said, hey, you know, I want to rent it on Friday, and I want, or I want to rent it on Thursday, return it on Friday, and I want to pick it up on Sunday again so I don't have to pay that extra day, right? And so they, they, she knew exactly what we are talking about because she knew, she, she probably, well, she knew exactly what I was talking about, that I'm a Sabbath keeper. She even said it to the other person, her coworker, Sabbath something. And so she knew. I didn't even have to say it. It's the only visible commandment that you can see that's being kept. So we got to answer, answer the question, you know, why are these people, why are the saints now, the tribulation saints, now keeping the Sabbath, or, you know, are keeping the commandments? The answer is, they probably realize their mistake. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But there's five wise virgins, five foolish virgins, okay? And you say, hey, you're judging. No, I'm not judging. I don't, I'm just trying to understand what the qualifiers are, because there's obviously two different groups of virgins. Some are wise, and they get to go in, in with the bridegroom and into the wedding chamber, and there's other five that are left behind. Well, why are suddenly now all these people, Christians, who, you know, who fight against the Seventh-day Sabbath and the commandments of Elohim, say, grace, 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 but, you know, but now they're keeping these commandments in this tribulation. So, Isaiah 28, I went through this, guys. In one of my videos that I just recently pu published, it's really important stuff because it deals with um, some very important things. And we'll go ahead and go through this. I felt it's so important to put it back in here. But they have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up with wine. They're out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. I said this is modern Christianity, guys. Okay. For all of the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so there is no place clean. Modern Christianity is unclean, unholy. Un, it's a lawless religion. Unholy means unset apart. There's nothing really set apart about it. You can establish however you want to do and do what you got to do um, and go about that. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Okay, so there's a difference between uh, doctrines, guys, those that are on the meat and those that are still on the milk. Okay, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips, okay, and another tongue will he speak to this people. So someone's going to be speaking from a different language than the Hebrew language to these people and telling them, hey, what are these going to be telling them? Let's find out what this person telling these people. Okay? To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So what is this rest and what is this refreshing? Okay? Every week, if you take the Sabbath off, you are super refreshed. So this person must be keeping, teaching the Ten Commandments. Telling the people, hey, let's return to the Ten Commandments. Yet they would not hear. Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus saith Yahweh, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. 
Uh, and as for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So basically here in Jeremiah, he's saying, hey, the old paths, the ancient paths. Well, that's the Ten Commands, okay? The moral law, the royal law of Yahweh. He's saying, you do these, you'll find rest for your souls. But the people are saying, hey, we're, we're not going to walk in that. But you guys say, well, that's Old Testament. That's Jeremiah, the prophet. Well, here, here's Yeshua. Yeshua said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. It's the same thing that Jeremiah said right here. You shall find rest unto your souls. You shall find rest unto your souls. What's Yeshua talking about? The old path. Okay, the good way. He is the way. And all he did, guys, was teach us how to keep the Ten Commandments. Keep them. Keep all Ten Commandments. Okay, he showed us how to keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. Guys, look into it. He kept it. He showed us how to keep it. Okay, it's not hard. It's not grievous. Read First John if you think it's grievous. Go through that whole chapter. Okay, but the word of Yahweh was unto them precept upon precept, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and, and snared and taken. So guys, this message that was going out, that was, you find uh, rest for your souls, rest for the weary, cause the weary to ref rest, and this refreshing, yet they would not hear. This was spoken to Ephraim, uh, the drunkards of Ephraim. And this is spoken for this generation, guys, the crown of pride. You know, that didn't happen until 1970. So this message, I really believe, is for today. And not even just for today, guys. If you look here, it was that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Taken, guys. So, um, everyone's looking for a rapture. Well, looks like this could be qualifications to be taken. To find the weary, for the weary to rest. Let's talk about this verse right here. Isaiah 8.20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. This is regarding the false prophets, guys. If you don't speak according to the law or the, to the testimony, it says, the, the scriptures say, if, you're not, if you don't speak according to that word, there is no light in them. Okay, but everybody, once you bring up the law, the Ten Commands, everybody wants to, like, you know, argue and fight you bitterly to the end. Okay, these are placed inside. And hallelujah, you know, uh, I got a, such an encouraging uh, uh, comment from someone out there who, when I first started, we were, like, button heads in the comment section. His name's Rick. And now he's, like, keeping the Ten Commandments and he's going back to the Ten Commandments and he's getting back to the commandments and so hallelujah um, but second Peter chapter 2 says there were false prophets among but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall bring in damnable heresies and I know everybody now is saying oh you're bringing in damnable heresies work salvation no I'm not I'm not saying to trust in any type of works guys okay uh, the works of the law were completed when Yeshua went on the tree he fulfilled the works of the law the works of the law is having to do a sacrifice every time you sin okay that's the works of the law that brings death think of all the animal sacrifices the animal deaths that are associated with the works of the law all right so my battery is about to die I don't know if we're gonna have to bring it inside real quick so I'm going to go ahead and pause this here, and we'll pick it back up. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to have to keep this a little bit more quiet because the wife and the kids are all sleeping. And might have to cut this short a little bit, but let's get through this here. So, uh, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom uh, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if Elohim spared not the angels that sinned, 
but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah. Okay? Saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So he was preaching righteousness going in. Now, people want to say, oh, it's the Noahide law. I beg to differ because the seventh day Sabbath isn't in the Noahide law. The Noah, Noah was just, what, eight generations from Adam, the eighth person. He knew what the, ten, the Sabbath was, guys. So if Noah was a preacher, preacher of righteousness right here, he was preaching the Sabbath day before the flood came. And, and the writer of first, second Peter, Peter is saying, hey, he's using it for now. That he was a preacher of righteousness. So what is a preacher of righteousness, guys? If they don't speak according to the law and the testimony, okay, people aren't sharing with you the truth about the times, and they're not sharing with you truths about the laws of Elohim, guys. Look, are they speaking according to the law and the testimony? Okay, I know, I know James over at Visual Proof is. But this is something I just want to bring up, guys, because this is something that's very, I got to be honest on how I see it. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And he was preaching righteousness. And if he's preaching righteousness, he's preaching the commands of Elohim. He's preaching the law and the testimony, not the Noahide law. He's preaching the seven, he was preaching the seventh day Sabbath right before the floods happened. Okay, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them as an example unto those that should live ungodly. Well, I told you, uh, the the crown of pride of the of the drunkards of Ephraim are those that are living ungodly, and delivered just Lot. Lot was just, even though he was vexed with the filthy con conversation of the wicked. So it was all around him, guys. But Lot, he was taken out. Okay? So, um, this is Second Peter. And this is something that we have to really look at and think about. Okay? And if you're not keeping the Ten Commands, it might be time to repent and rec really, rec really self-examine yourself. Because we don't know how much time could be left. So like it said, days of Noah, Yeshua said in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, I shared this in my last video, but the 40th, 40th and final day of the flood judgment was like about a week ago. And here we are right here on the second day of the fourth month. And this is the Sodom and Gomorrah judgment happened somewhere in this time period that I'm project that I've narrowed it down to. So you have this and you have this. Let's be real about the situation, guys. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot. This is just what it is. It's like hand in hand, guys. So, so guys, that's just the rest of Second uh, Peter chapter two. So, what do you think? I had a question for you again. Why do you think that Judah did not go into, why did they have to go to Babylon? Judah had to go, kingdom of Judah had to go to where? They had to go to Babylon. For how many years? For 70 years, guys. Why did Judah have to go to Babylon? Because they didn't keep the land Sabbath for 70 years. Out of 490 years, 70 of those years should have been rests for the land, and they didn't do it. And what happened to them? They were taken off they were first they were sieged and then i'm sure they were pillaged and raped and they were and the ones that were and then they were taken as slaves over into as captives over into babylon guys okay so with that being said they had to go in babylon and be in babylon for 70 years Kind of maybe like a seven-year tribulation. So what's funny is, is that the 70th week of Daniel is about 
to start sometime here in, in 2018 or up to March 19, 2019. I think it's going to start on the first day of the seventh month. That's just when I believe it's going to start. It's going to be the tenth day of the seventh month on on um, the Babylonian lunar calendar, which is incorrect. But if Elohim be a just judge and sent Judah into Babylon, okay, Judah is the is a, the house of Judah into Babylon for not keeping the land Sabbath. Do you think this could be equaling a qualifying factor? for the wise and foolish virgins. So there's going to be a lot of people rejoicing, frolicking like 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 those um, like those uh, calves that we saw. But there's also going to be people that are going to be completely gutted, okay, that that they weren't counted worthy to escape. I'm just not and I'm not judging uh, uh, another uh, uh, I'm not judging um, a uh, servant, uh, another ma uh, uh, another servant of a master. What I am saying, though, is that there's some sort of qualification to be found worthy to escape and unworthy to escape. Okay, there's five five wise bullish, uh, the virgins had oil in their lamps. The five foolish virgins didn't. The five wise virgins got to go to this place of rejoicing, uh, you know, for the wedding, this, this, you know, with the wedding party, but the virgins didn't. The other five virgins didn't. And so I'm just saying, I'm not here and I'm not being judgmental, but I am trying to be, I am trying to understand and provide something that I don't hear anybody talking about. What is the determining factor for people who make it and not make it? Some people say it's the Holy Spirit. Well, well, someone says, I believe it's a scripture, the Holy Spirit is given to them, those who obey him. I don't know the exact verse. You should look that one up. But obeying him is obeying his commandments, from what I believe and many other people believe as well. And the seventh-day Sabbath is one of them for sure. So, here's the last thing I want to leave you guys with. Cry loud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They asked of me the ordinances of justice. They delight in approaching to Elohim. Wherefore have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not, wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou didst take no knowledge. No knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, uh, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do to th this day, to make your voice be heard on high. If is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to Yahweh? Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loosen the bands of, the, of wickedness and to do heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor and cast out that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked, thou cover him, and thou hide thyself from thy own flesh? Then shalt thy light then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy light and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and the righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of Yahweh shall be thy reward. Right here, <laughs> the complete Jewish Bible translation says, Then shall, your light shall burst forth like the morning. Your skin, your new skin, will quickly grow over your wound, and your righteousness will precede you, and Yahweh's glory will follow you. When? Right here. After this. Then you shall call... 
and Yahweh shall answer you. Then you shall cry, and he shall hear. And if he shall say, Here I am, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted, okay, go to the widows and the orphans and the poor and the needy, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday, so solar noon, and Yahweh shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. You're going to be nourished. A mount shall be like a watered garden, that, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And Yahweh, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Okay, and thou shalt be called the repair of the breach, and the restorer of paths to dwell in. Okay, remember he says, shut thy doors for a little while till the indignation be passed over. Okay, they're dwelling in their in their dwellings. If thou turn thy foot uh, from the Sabbath, from uh, from doing thy pleasure. Thou turn away thy foot from if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing the thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight and the holy of Yahweh honorable and shalt honor him not doing thy own ways nor finding thy own pleasure nor speaking thy own words then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it guys right upon the high places of the earth this is like the Sun and the luminaries that's like the high places of the earth being fed with the heritage of Jacob this happens when you delight yourself in Yahweh this happens when you keep the Sabbath and you turn your foot from doing your pleasure to, to his holy day and doing what he says for us to do, which is to rest. This isn't to go out and shop or, or do sporting activities on this day with your children or to go out and have a, a bite to eat with your friends or to walk around the mall. This is a day that we're called to call a delight. This is the ancient path, the rest that you will find for your souls, okay, that we talked about. This is the commands that he wants all men to return to, the ancient paths. Okay, Yeshua said, I am the way. Well, the way is a path, right? My last name means van der Laan. Laan means street, path, way, from the way, I'm from the way, okay, I'm now from the way. Why? When? When I turn to keep his commands, I'm on the way. And it's all Yeshua talked about everywhere in his scriptures, the keeping his commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, okay? It's the same thing that was said in Mount Sinai when the commandments were given. If you love me, keep my commandments. So guys... Signing off for now. Um, consider these things. You know, if this is something that convicts you, make repentance in your heart immediately. And keep his commands. He knows who are his, and he knows who's real and who's not real. Shalom.